Hi, welcome to RSD Academy. I'm Bob Duhamel. Today I'm going to talk about capacitors and safety. Now in addition to the regular precautions you need to take with electronic circuits, especially high voltage circuits, there are a couple of issues with capacitors that we need to take a look at. The first is that capacitors store energy. So one problem that we have with capacitors is that they are used in high voltage DC power supplies. So let's take a quick look at what that entails. Here is some kind of a power source. I don't want to draw the whole power supply because that comes way down the road in this class. But the final stage of your typical DC power supply is going to be some big capacitors. I'll just put one big capacitor there, but you could have multiple capacitors in parallel to increase your capacitance. And what this does is it smooths out the uh, voltage because our voltage may have some uh, what they call ripple in it. The voltage is changing at uh, regular intervals and we need to smooth that out and the capacitor acts like a reservoir as the voltage goes up the capacitor absorbs energy and as it goes down it releases energy and smooths that out so we get a more steady voltage. And so they call that a filter capacitor. And these will always be electrolytic capacitors to get the kind of capacitance you need. And so there's a couple of issues with electrolytic capacitors. One is they're polarized. And so if we put that capacitor in backwards, the insulation is going to break down, the electrolyte is going to boil, that's going to pressurize the inside of the capacitor, and the capacitor could explode. Same thing could happen if you put too much voltage across the capacitor. So capacitors in backwards or too much voltage, or maybe just old worn out capacitors, will sometimes explode. We need to be careful about that. I had an instructor at my electronics school who had an incident, I uh, had a large uh, electrolytic capacitor about the size of a small soda can uh, explode and the top came off and hit him right in the stomach. And uh, he thought he was probably badly injured except not only was it about the size of a soda can, it weighed about as much as a soda can and it turned out he wasn't hurt. But still that's something you don't want happening. I personally had an, a capacitor explode in my face once. Uh, it was just a little capacitor that had been installed backwards. I was trying to troubleshoot it poking around trying to figure out why the voltage wasn't coming up the way it should and suddenly the capacitor exploded, caught me in the face and I had a face full of electrolyte and paper. I had to go wash my eyes out real quick. So uh, exploding capacitors can be a problem. One is if you put too much voltage across them or make sure you get your polarity right with electrolytic capacitors. And remember tantalum capacitors are electrolytic capacitors so make sure you get your voltage right. Another thing about high voltage power supplies is this is going to have a lot of voltage across it. Let's say it's just 100 volts. Maybe it's more. But we have some significant voltage across there. Okay, so this is powering some circuit over here. We'll show that as a resistive load. And we'll put a power switch over here. And we are finished doing what we're doing, so we disconnect the load and we open the switch and we're done. And then we decide, oh, we need to uh, do some work inside here. So we open up the uh, power supply and start poking around in there. What do we have? We have a capacitor that's charged up to 100 volts and it's probably a big capacitor so it can store a lot of energy and it can be dangerous. It can be deadly. People have been killed by charged capacitors and high voltage power supplies. So you have to keep that in mind. Now when you build these, when these are built, they are going to put a bleeder resistor in parallel with the capacitance. A huge resistance, maybe 100,000 to a million ohms. Just put a 1M there. The whole idea with that is the resistor is big enough that it doesn't affect the rest of the circuit, but when you turn off the power, it will slowly discharge that capacitor. So after a couple of minutes, it'll be safe, right? Perfectly safe, right? Unless the resistor has failed and become open, or maybe it's just a bad connection. So we can't trust those. Those are a safety feature that you still can't trust. So we always need to discharge these capacitors before we start going around and poking in the circuit. As a matter of fact, the way this is made, we still have the 100 volts across the output. So before tinkering around in there, we need to discharge it. How are we going to do that? Uh, quickest, easiest way is to take a big resistor, maybe 100,000 ohms or a mega ohm, put it in a clip lead, clip the opposite end of the ground, and touch that to the top of all the capacitors to make sure they're discharged. You may hear people say you should do this with a high voltage probe, which means you're basically doing it with a high voltage voltmeter. 
and oh, that's going to be a pretty high resistance. Yeah, that'll discharge it. And not only that, but you can actually watch the voltage go down on the meter as it discharges, so you can be absolutely sure it's discharged. So either an impromptu discharge device made with a clip lead and a resistor, or a high voltage voltmeter that you can watch the voltage go down as it uh, discharges. Now, do you have to worry about discharging a low voltage power supply? Let's say it's just 12 volts. Yeah, and I go poking around in there, 12 volts isn't enough to hurt me, but if you short these capacitors to ground, even 12 volts can give you a pretty good spark, and I think just about every technician probably has a screwdriver or some other tool uh, that he's melted by touching two uh, charged capacitors. So always discharge your capacitors to ground before messing around inside a DC power supply. So if you think this video was useful and informative, as usual, please give me a thumbs up down below and please keep those comments coming. Those likes and those comments help the channel and they help people who are looking for these kinds of videos find them. And as I've said, I wish I could respond to more of the comments and answer more of the questions. I just don't have the time, but I do as many as I can. And when you ask questions, sometimes other people come along and answer them if I don't have the time to do so. And remember that RSD Academy is an online vocational school where you can study electronics technology for free and prepare to become a certified electronics technician. A big thank you to my patrons at Patreon who are helping make this possible. If you'd like to help make RSD Academy possible, you can go to patreon.com slash join slash RSD Academy and pledge a donation. Again, a big thank you to my patrons and a big thank you to everyone for watching. So capacitors in backwards or too much voltage or maybe just